All right, welcome back. You're watching Morning Prime. Thank you for staying with us. We continue with the deliberations, and I can assure you there was heated during the break as they are during the airing of the comments. Thank you for staying with us. We continue with the evaluation of the week, and I just pose the question to the Member of Parliament of Matuga constituency around his observations on the finance bill so far bearing in mind parliament will be resuming as it next week uh, to deliberate on matters finance bill and thereafter vote whether to pass it as it is or make amendments to the bill so what's in store for kenyans from where you sit what is what is in store for kenyans and uh, what is in the minds of the legislators is to give Kenyans the best out of the situation that we are in. Remember, uh, we are in a, in a deep hole. Uh, remember, our ceiling is, uh, is at its lowest against the dollar. Mm -hmm. Not because of the Kenya Kwanzaa government, but because of factors uh, beyond our control, international uh, reactions and uh, historical whatever happened. That is the situation that we are in. So as legislators, as leaders, we agree we are not at our best economically. Our ceiling is not doing well. And the moment it's not doing well, then everything, you know, inflation follows uh, depreciation of the Kenyan ceiling. But in this current budget, I can assure Kenyans, we are tackling that which hurts most. One, the issue of unemployment. This is something that we campaigned on that platform that you are going to create jobs, headed by His Excellency the President himself. And if you go through the budget in all sectors, in all ministries, in all departments, it is about job creation. Look at the newest kid in the block, the Minister of the Blue Economy. This is a potential where you wonder, oh, why, 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 why has it been left all this time with all the opportunities in terms of job creation? from the waters, from the vessels, you know, the maritime affairs, you know. Those are jobs in thousands, which we Kenyans uh, right now, I can tell you unfortunately, because we have not been into it, we cannot take those opportunities because we've been not training, we don't have the necessary skills, you know. But in this budget, in this budget, looked at in totality, and I've just said about one department, go to the water, department, the Minister of Water, the dams that they are actually been proposed to be constructed, multi-purpose dams, water for drinking and for irrigation. Irrigation is about food uh, security. I think that is where we are. We are complaining about the high cost of living, but mainly we are looking at one commodity, unga, isn't it? Okay, the other commodity is equally expensive, but certainly the majority of us depend on Look at the effort that has been put in terms of food security. The water aspect that now we move from rain-fed agriculture to irrigation. That is basically the main budget in the, the, the Ministry of Water. And the uh, job creation that comes with the infamous or famous housing levy, 3%. This is not a tax, it is a levy, but the most important thing is in job creation. You know, we are missing the bigger picture on this issue, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Remember, the previous regime had uh, Kazim Tani, you know, where one would be engaged, aende kwa mtaru, angalie, atoe takataka zieke on the road, mtuwa barabara, mvoi kinyeshe, narudi pale, so that it's work in progress. Ya natoa, naweka, it comes back. But how does that help? It was not a leo. I you supervised see, you see, you see. It was not a leo, You see, okay, but, but after that, what happens? But now we're saying, this 3%, Levy. I'm not going to talk about uh, to hurt the economy, my salary, my pay slip. In any case, whether the houses you need them or not, Kyoko, these houses are not meant for you. Mm. They are meant for those who don't have houses. Mm. And it will be very unfortunate to say, because I have my house in, uh, you stay in Kileleshwa, I know, that because you stay in Kileleshwa, <laughs> then you don't care that your employee who comes to wash your clothes it stays in a leaking muddy roof with no water, with no whatever. But the most important thing is the issue of job creation. Okay. You know. but, but, but tell me this, if public yeah. participation truly matters, yeah. the voice of those who are opposing yeah. the housing fund, yeah. public service workers, yeah. you have some unions coming up in arms against it, shouldn't yeah. that voice matter exactly. despite 
the positives that it Jesse, intends to Jesse, bring. Jesse, if public participation was to be done mm. and be done properly, and we take percentages. Okay. The majority are the people who don't have houses. All right. The majority are the people who are not going to be deducted salaries per se as per this structure because they don't have houses. Point. So yeah. if public participation was to be done and say the majority of Kenya said this, this thing will be passed with over 70 percent. Because if you are talking about the civil servants versus the population of Kenya, yeah. the teachers versus the population of Kenya, and uh, maybe the media people and the consultants. How many are they? Are we getting it? How many are they? So this public participation, if it was to be done, okay. against those who don't have houses, those who need these houses, and those who already have houses, definitely the numbers are there. This would pass, you know. But the problem uh -huh. is that those who are most affected normally don't have the voices to come to this platform. They can't write articles and counter what Akina Kena probably talking about. Okay, okay. See, that right. is, but us so, as parliamentarians, <laughs> but us as parliamentarians, okay, okay. you know, us as no, parliamentarians, no, no, no. We, represent, we represent the people in the Vijiji. Uh, you know where they was? Our votes actually come from those pre underprivileged areas. Definitely any politician, even in Nairobi City here, atakwambia mtu wa Langata, urazake ziko, Kibera. Mm. Mtu wa nini Dagoreti, Kurazake, Ziko, ah, yes, nini, whatever, okay. those okay. where the votes are. So we know actually what is happening. Unlike the technocrats <laughs> or the employed who are now living in their comfort zones and saying, I don't want my salary to be deducted. That's where the problem is. I Hi, think, as think, you come in, yeah. Just, yeah. I think the first thing, yeah. the yeah. greatest problem is a communication problem. Yeah. Mm. In this, this budget issue, is not out here. It's a communication matter. problem. Even the explanation Mashimiwa is putting here, <laughs> it is a communication challenge because he is alienating me. But me as an investor, this is how I'd look at it. Where is it that I'm going to put 3,000 shillings in a, in a year is 72,000 and I get another 72,000? Which business gives me 100% profit in a year? Now, instead of selling it as a scheme, Mashimiwa, you are alienating this 700, you know, the maths is very interesting, eh? If you just take 700,000 civil servants and they contribute 3,000 and the government tops up 3,000, that is 15.4 billion a year. In five years, that's 50 billion. The government can be able to mobilize 50 billion in a year and it, is, it can then go as seed capital and get investors to bring another 250 for a labor intensive approach in the economy. Mm. Now, he is selling it as a task. Me, I'm selling it as a saving, and I'm telling it's Jesse, it's not a tax. It's not a tax. Yeah, yeah. Jesse, uh -huh. here's an opportunity for you to put uh, 3,000 is 36,000 in a year, times five years is uh, 256. Give the government 256, mm -hmm. and in five years, it's going to give you another 256,000. So you will have 500,000 and. It's an investment. For me, I look at purely as an investment. What the government does with that money, be it housing, the heat clearing bushes, provided my guaranteed return on this money with interest is there. It is a good investment. The government is mobilizing local capital to engage young people on manual laboring job. For me, it's a communication. The gaps in this budget, if they are, if they are, is because Oishimiwa's or Kenya Kwanza's people are not coming out to explain. When Raila stands up and says cost of living is high, uh, there are many taxes involved. It takes the president to address the nation, for people to start seeing Allah, oh, so this budget is good. But how many press conferences will the president call? Mm. What are, are his okay. MPs, what are his mandarins in government doing to come out and sell this budget to the ordinary Kenyans so that they understand the vision, where the vision bearer is taking us? I had misconceptions about the 3% mm. housing tax. Uh -huh. But when I interrogate it from a personal perspective, if my 3,000 is going to give me... A house. A, a, not even a or house. Even an investment. An investment. After yeah. seven years. Huh? I'm, I'm putting yeah. 3,000 and somebody is stopping me up another 3,000. Mm -hmm. uh, take it up front. Take it, yeah. Because that, that, <laughs> okay. that money, was, I, I was going to lose it anyway. All right, the, all right. The, the caliber of people in the... Allow me to say this. Yeah. In the civil service, that 3,000 might be the beer they take in Nairobi West every weekend. Now you're being told, don't take that beer, put it here. Now it is a communication challenge. The president said there are 20 areas he's removed taxes on. He's given Kenyans uh, tax reliefs. 
uh, here, and I'm not putting him on task. Yeah. But I thought that is what he was going to say. You know, this tax relief you've gotten here is going to lead you here. Mm -hmm. This issue is going to don't 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 uh, don't do blank. Don't be like us. As we are not in parliament, we don't have that information. Secondly, uh, on the matter of the counties, mm -hmm. I think it's it's a it's a topical conversation uh, that nobody is killing devolution. Nobody has capacity to kill devolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might be having cash flow problems. We might be having cash flow problems. Governors have this ability to pass the back upwards. So they go to their people and say, the reason you have not been paid is because the government of President Ruto is not giving us money. Now, Ruto, uh, President Ruto being an astute politician understands by not sending money on time what it means to the hustler base that is in Kwale, to the hustler base that is in Makweni, that even if he did not vote for him, that hustler there is inspired by his government. So it is in President Tutu's government, key interest, to ensure that this cash flow management problem is attained. Now, they inherited a government that is broke, which is a fact. The economic situation that we are as a country is very bad. Yet they overpromised. This government so overpromised. Is it the economy or is it a broke government? So now, no. we, we, the, the, this government is trying to balance meeting the meeting, no, no, it's, it's a, okay, it, it, okay. you know, the government can, 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 can collect money, yes. but money is prioritized. Who has the first charge on the consolidated fund? So if you remove all of that, what is remain to fulfill the campaign promises? And you can see when the president went to the burial of uh, Madam uh, Shosho Mukami, and the people of Njambini are telling, telling him, this road, you were here. You said it will be built. So he is caught up between fulfillment of campaign promises and a government that is broke. How do you balance that? That is where this 3% tax, e, this 3% incentive is giving us, is good for him because it gives him 15 billion annually to meet and plan areas that he thinks are a priority. Okay, Dr. as you come in, a lot has been said. And <laughs> if you could summarize in terms of your expectations around the finance bill, especially um, when it comes to which group of the society it favors because one might argue in terms of the those who earn more of course uh, 35 percent you'll be looking at that those who earn less in terms of businesses and i had this being argued is it the turnover tax mm -hmm. in terms of your business you'll still be affected at the end of the day so who wh what's the the sweet point in the finance bill as you see it briefly uh, right. Um, I'll, I'll not go without mentioning the county government because of uh, uh, being a politician from that area. <laughs> uh, I think what the Council of Governors are saying in terms of shutting down uh, the counties just for lack of uh, cash flow, I think is uncalled for because county government or the county belongs to the people who are there and the services if they are shut are the people who are there who are going to suffer. It's not the top cream that will go and suffer. People go out of this country to go and look for medication. But the people who go for those services are the people who live there. And I think it will be reckless for governors to just come out and say they're going to shut uh, services in the county. They should find out as leaders of that county what modalities they can use to sustain the services in this period when the government is trying to organize themselves to uh, find solutions to the current challenges. And that way I think we'll be going, um, uh, we'll be moving ahead very well okay. in terms of uh, services that are needed at the county level. And I will not going to encourage the go governors to just come and pronounce as a politician that we're going to shut down that services. The people in Takaba, Takaba is the village I come from, Mandera West, constituency don't understand what the, the cash flow means they only want to know the paracetamols the amoxicillin and the injection they get from um, the sub county hospital is the one that matters to them a lot or the dispensary or the health center around there so i think it will be reckless for them to mention that and they are comparing things that are not compatible in terms of uh, uh, shutting down when you shut down services in nairobi probably 
as Wakili was saying, garbages and those other things will be an issue. Garbages in Mandara is not an issue. We have, don't even have garbages to be collected. <laughs> so the, our issue is uh, the basic services that we, we want to get, which is not even sufficient and it's not of high quality, but that still keeps us going. Currently, because of the floods and the rains, uh, there are a lot of outbreaks of malaria, there's a lot of cholera, and we will not want someone to talk about uh, shutdown of services in the county because that will grossly affect our people on the, gr uh, the ground there. And I think on that aspect, I'll stop there. In terms of the, the bill, I think the parliamentarians are doing a very good job. <laughs> Let me just applaud Mwishimwa here for that. Uh, one thing Wagili has mentioned is that we need information. We need to know exactly what it means by 3% uh, uh, housing. The housing. Mm. You know, the moment communication is not complete, speculations begins and people will start talking about negativity. And the negativity aspect of it, just ask for somebody's cash, even if it is one shilling. You're going to find, you're going to find people fighting back. But tell them that uh, if you pay 100,000 for purposes of your benefit tomorrow, and this is what it will going to do, you will see people saying you are selling a business idea to us. And now, as he has put it very well, the government wants to do business with us. The government wants to uh, us to pay a 3% housing uh, money. And he says after seven months, if you are, if seven years, if you are not interested in it, we'll give you back double, which is a very good thing. But double, not double, but yes. But at least with some profit. <laughs> it's double? Yes. Double, yeah. 3,000 for 3,000. But, yeah. oh, oh, but, I thought but, giving back but okay. yeah. Yeah. the point comes now. How will you disseminate that information to a common person whom you want his money? One. Number two, uh, in terms of uh, benefit, Kenyans are worried about what their money will be used for because of the historical issues of corruption, the historical use of taking... You remember the project in uh, Kibra, the housing project? I mean, the people who are given those houses were not the ones uh, who are really supposed to be, yeah, who yeah. could afford. Yeah. And what happens? You have started paying some money for purposely changing your life, but when the right time comes, Wakili and myself, who have some little money, will start buying those houses with uh, uh, some... Uh, a raised amount of money where the people who are supposed to manage that money will going to sell to us and then we will use it as our investment and that has happened quite a number of times i don't point of affordable exactly housing. affordable housing mm. so my concept is that i know the president has a very positive uh, direction okay. he wants to make a mileage for the next five years okay. but the people who are going to work with him on this aspect of must be on the radar all through and we must know who should be the beneficiary of these houses and so that at the end of the day when someone claims that I was a beneficiary and I, uh, but I missed uh, to get my slot, people know who was the initial beneficiary who have paid for these houses all right, all right. and who, 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 who is the last one who will benefit again we'll see at the end of the day. Briefly. I think um, I agree with the Michael panelists, especially <coughs> Dr. Rian Pioko. I think but not is, no, I don't agree with him. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. no, it's just because of the, the point is communication. Yeah. Yeah. And I was here on, the, on Sunday evening when the president had just finished his uh, remarks. And mm. one of the things that I said was that the president was struggling to communicate his vision to people or to Kenyans. And so that aspect of communication, um, there has to be a lot of work to be done, whether it's through the public participation processes or government has to buy space in newspapers like the Standard and put in leaflets, at least for those who will be able to purchase the newspaper, to scan through. And or then run inform. programs on the TV. Yeah, or run programs on TV and uh, local radio stations. Mm -hmm. Government officers need to be empowered to go and speak about the wider government agenda. On the housing tax, whether it's a tax, because I think that's a question that is still there. Whether it's a tax or it's a contribution, the president it's said it's a, a tax. How to say it is not a tax? The president was asked, yes, right. he said it was a contribution, and now Meshmoa said it's a levy. Now, those are three <laughs> different things that need to be clarified. Yeah. On the modalities of doing it, I think the government is, in my view, missing the point. How? If you want to be able to do, uh, to create employment opportunities, and if you listen to the present, most of the areas he was mentioning, particularly are informal areas within Nairobi. How about decongesting Nairobi? So that, for example, he's gone to CIA, 
and he's agreed with the county government on an area where a housing plan is supposed to be put. He's gone to Homer Bay, he's agreed with the, the governor there on how a plan is going to be put. How about moving further and empower those county governments, yeah, to be able to be the owners of those uh, processes and then get the young people that want to come to Nairobi, then we start the processes in Nairobi and then we send them to those plants in Nairobi to do this work in their counties, number one. Number two, how about engaging in a pilot scheme? Other than telling employers we are going to contribute an additional 1.5% uh, to make it 3% or 3% because this, this, this scheme is also not new. Started with the budget of 2018 yeah, yeah. where contributions were up to 1.5%. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then we communicate one to Kenyans the successes of the 1.5. How did it work? What have we been able to achieve? What did government do? Because in 2013 we were told we'll do half a million jobs. Show us where are they? We've just been talking about Kibira, whether actually the, the target beneficiaries from a program a cycle process are the people who are benefiting. Have there been challenges? And as a government, what do we intend to do to deal with those challenges? Then we now move forward and tell Kenyans, based on these successes, we now want to pilot with, say, 14 counties, because we have 47 counties. And each of these counties, as the president was saying, that is focusing on informal settlements, and Mwishimu has been talking about Kazim Taani, then we say, in order not for us to be seen to be too ma macro and huge for something which Kenyans still do, don't understand, okay. let's pilot with a few counties. Okay. Okay. And largely integrate this with county governments. Because a number of all these functions, even the ones that Mwishimu is talking about, most of them are county government functions. Yeah? And again, the question of land. The land that is going to be used by national government are in county governments. Right. What does that mean to counties? So okay. Where is the space in most places, government? Gentlemen, I think in most I'll places, have to cut you short. Uh, we don't have the time. Yeah. We don't have the time. Unfortunately, we'll have to finish it at that particular point. Asante Nisana for your time. There's been friendly fire, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you've communicated to the masses. Yes. Uh, Asante Ni, Dr. Yeah, no, Isaka San, governance uh, expert. Kevin Osido, governance expert. Joseph Kyoko, political analyst. And Kasim Tandaza, member of parliament, Matuga constituency. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've had a fantastic morning, informed about the latest news making headlines. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. My name is Jesse Rogers. Good morning.